Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today, special digital edition. I'm here with Daryl Scott, and that's a name that might ring a bell for you. If you remember Columbine and Rachel Scott, uh, one of the first students killed, unfortunately, in, in that terrible shooting. Her father is with me, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that have been in the news quite a bit lately. Good to have you. Well, thank you. Good to be here. So it, update us, because, you know, Columbine's been a while ago, um, so it's been a while for you. What, what all have you been doing? You've been writing some books, speaking a lot? Well, it's been 19 years since my daughter died at Columbine, mm -hmm. and uh, in the first two years, I traveled all over the United States and several other countries speaking. And we create, my wife and I created a program called Rachel's Challenge. And a lot of your viewers will have been through that program from, yeah. from high school, middle school, even college. Hmm. And we've reached over 28 million students in the last 19 years in live settings. We have 50 presenters who travel all over the world. We, we're, we have 10 employees in uh, Mexico and uh, we do all the schools in Bermuda every month. We do a lot of schools here in the United States. And uh, I work closely with other organizations that work with kids. Uh, there's a Dr. Robert Marzano, who's kind of the guru of research in K-12 education. We've written a couple of books together. And I do a lot of speaking to superintendents' conferences, principals' conferences, and teacher conferences. You know, Columbine, at least in my memory, and, and maybe that's a little bit short, but it was sort of the the spark that said, hey, we got a problem here, mm -hmm. you know. But yet, 19, 20 years later, you know, we're, we're still talking about school shootings and we've still got school right. shootings. And I don't know if it's just there's there's more of them or if it's in the news more, but it, it seems like a problem that hadn't gone away. No, there, there are more school shootings. There, <clears throat> there were a few uh, rural areas that had shootings. Pearl, Mississippi, I've spoken there. Uh, uh, Jonesboro, yeah. uh, but Columbine was the first major shooting. Uh, Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Parkland are the three that have kind of stood out right. when it comes to K through 12 uh, shootings. And uh, there's there's an average of one or two shootings every every week. I've been told. I haven't done the research on it, but a lot of them don't make the the news because sometimes no one's killed, just injured. Right. But it's far more than you know. One is too much. Right. But our focus has been, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about gun control. There's been a lot of, uh, for 20 years, people have talked about gun control. And we've chosen to go down a different path. And we talk, we, we reach children through kindness, compassion, and our program uh, deals with connecting people to each other mm -hmm. instead of just looking at the, the weapon that does the killing. Mm -hmm. Let's reach the hearts of the young men who do the shooting. Mm. And we've seen seven school shootings that we know of prevented uh, from students who turn themselves in after an assembly or after a training. Mm. And are some, in some cases, young people turned in a friend that was talking about shooting at their school. Mm. And we see around three uh, suicides prevented every week wow. from students, unsolicited emails, phone calls, letters from students who were planning to take their life. And we overlook suicide because school shootings are much more dramatic, but far more children die from suicide than die from school shootings. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a lot, of, a lot of lives saved. What's your basic message there? We, our, our pro, we have over 20 programs, and our, our starting program is an assembly for the whole school. And we do K through 12, but they're all age appropriate. And we, sh we simply share my daughter's story. Uh, she reached out at her school to students who were overlooked, students who were lonely. And uh, she stood up for kids. Like one of the stories we tell is a young man named Adam who was in special ed classes. And uh, uh, two boys were shoving him, knocked his books out of his hands. And Rachel ran over, got between those two boys and Adam, doubled up her fist and said, if you touch him again, you're gonna have to fight me. Mm. I'm sure they were scared out of their minds, you know, this little girl threatening them. <laughs> but they backed off and she and Adam became friends. She only had two months to live. Mm. But uh, she got her friends to reach out to him. And what she didn't know, he never told her, he told our family, uh, was that he had plans to commit suicide. He mm. felt like nobody cared. Mm. And when we share that story in schools, we get so many young people that come to the forefront and say, you know, I was planning to take my life, and, and people in my school began to reach out to me after Rachel's challenge came to my school. Mm -hmm. So our, our mission, is our program is not religious and it's not uh, political, but it's focused on kindness and compassion 
And we founded it on the principle of a, a man by the name of William Wilberforce who uh, lived back in England many years ago. And he wanted to be a, a minister and he felt a call instead to restore manners to England. And because he restored manners to England, uh, he softened the ground in the hearts of people and it ended slavery yeah. even before it ended here in the United States. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I think you're probably more effective if, if you're not wading into the politics, but at the same time, this has become a highly politicized issue. Um, do you do you address that? Do you have some feelings on that that you share publicly? Yeah, I was I was my wife and I were at the White House a month ago, and something that President Trump had said rang true with me. He said we need to work on becoming more connected, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he had me to to share a little bit with the Parkland survivors. Some of them were there, mm -hmm. and I talked about that. The fact that what we do is help connect young people to each other. We have programs that are very successful. Uh, we've seen rival gang members become friends as a result. We've seen people who haven't spoken for two or three years to each other become friends again. Mm. And uh, I'm, I said there, and I believe this strongly, and I, I teach and train teachers that if we focus too much on our similarities or our diversity, we create division. Mm. If we focus on our similarities, we create cliques. If we focus too much on diversity, we create division. If we focus too much on unity, we create compromise. But if we can focus on being connected and relatedness, and then we can appreciate people who differ from us because you can accept people without agreeing with them. Mm -hmm. You can accept people without approving of what they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't know the difference between acceptance and agreement and approval. So we do a lot of training to students on how you can, you don't have to agree with everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't even have to approve of what they do, but accept that person as a human being. And it's amazing how you find mm. gra common ground mm -hmm. and, and a lot of healing can take place. I, I dare say that that's far more effective than any law that could be passed. Oh, absolutely. Whether from Republicans or Democrats. We, you know, both have their solutions, but I think you're onto something that's way more effective. And we see it. It's not just theory. We, we see the results. Yeah. What's your website for people that might want to find out more about what you're doing, maybe do something in their school? You have some tools that would maybe help some people uh, kind of implement some things if they're like, you know, we need this in our school. Sure. Our, web, our website is rachelschallenge.com or .org, either one, or Rachel Scott, R-A-C-H-E-L, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, dot com or dot .org. Great. And what all is available there? A lot of resources for students and a lot of videos a lot of downloadable uh, things okay, that they can right. get. Yeah. And uh, then if they want to bring us into their school, there's information on how they can do that. Hmm. Great, appreciate you actually getting some real solutions out there well, thank to you. a problem that just you know breaks everyone's heart and frankly, frightens a lot of parents. I know my, my kids, all four of my kids went through public school all the way through. Some of them still in college and that's one of those things that you just as a parent, you know. Yeah. How do you, you know, what, what do you say to parents who are just you know, terrified of well, we, we do control, evening events right? with parents, and uh, and parents, usually the children bring their parents out, so we have large gatherings of parents. Uh, our presenter does two assemblies, a training. We create a service club <clears throat> with about 100 members to start with, and then we do an evening event with parents. And, uh, our, you know, our advice to parents is just common sense things. Love your kids. We partner some with a program called Love & Logic. Uh, Dr. Fay and, and they have great material for parents and we recommend that. But uh, I wanted I want to go back to one thing real quick. Mm -hmm. Children don't feel safe at school anymore. <clears throat> and that's a great concern for the parents as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's as important that they feel safe as it is that they are safe. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we do provide is a sense of safety through connectiveness. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a survey with 20,000 of our students around the country. Uh, then we got 10,000 of those surveys back, which was a huge return. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we asked them is, before Rachel's Challenge came to your school, 10,000 of them responded, how many of you felt safe at your school? Only 1,600 and something kids felt safe. Mm -hmm. And if a child doesn't feel safe, their adrenaline system is pumping, yeah. They're in a fight or flight mode. Yeah. They don't have as much blood in the brain, so they're not as smart. 
they won't perform as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we ask months later, uh, how many of you now feel safe in your school after Rachel's Challenge had been there? And that rose 262%. It was mm -hmm. like 5,600 and something said we feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I point out to parents and to teachers that we just sent a stranger into their school for one day. Mm -hmm. They did two assemblies, a training, and an evening event with you parents. And a dramatic change shifted in the mm -hmm. minds and hearts of those kids from just the area of feeling safe. Whether they were safer or not is not even the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is they feel safe. So their academics go up, their discipline problems go down. Mm -hmm. So if you as teachers, if you as parents, can help your child to feel safe mm -hmm. and give them encouragement and help them connect with other students, then you're going to see a lot of improvement in that area. Mm -hmm. That's good points. Appreciate all that you're doing. Well, thank you. And we thank you for watching. If you want to see more from Daryl Scott, you can see him on the Life Today program. That's available at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.